Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but I wanted to share with you guys my half bath makeover that I did. This is the bathroom that is right off of my kitchen. And I actually started on this in 2019, but kind of stopped and did a little here and there and then got pregnant and then pandemic and then, you know. So finally finished. So that's the after. And this is more like a video to give you inspiration okay so let's get started so the first thing i did was remove the uh, um mirror that was like wall to wall ceiling then i got this sink on clearance because it had a little ding on it for 65 dollars i picked out my tile laid it out on the floor in the hardware store figured out the design that i wanted to do and then put my idea on the wall. As you guys could see, I have a line down the middle, that's the center, and I also have a um, oval, that's where the mirror is gonna go. This piece of wood I put there to hold the tile up. I do have an entire video showing how I cut and lay tile, it's the same procedure. I'll have that video linked in the description, in the comments, and in the end of this video so you don't miss it, okay? It's not really hard to cut tile by hand. I do it manually, and I also use a Dremel tool for, I guess you would call them special cuts, so rounded cuts. I'll use a Dremel tool with a cheap diamond blade that I found on Amazon, okay? So I wanted my... Um, mirror area to look tall like really tall so that's why I laid my tile out like this I used the marble design tile as a frame and then did the herringbone pattern in the center of the frame here I photoshopped a mirror so to see how it would look and then I actually bought the mirror I believe this mirror was $20 or $25 then I realized I had to make holes and I was like, oh my gosh, I need a special drill. I went to the hardware store and they told me I can't drill through tile. So I figured it out. I put tape on there. I used a regular drill. I actually wet the tape and drilled through it and installed my mirror. It was very easy actually. Um, now I had to level my sink. As you guys could see, one side of the sink has a wider gap than the other side. I realized my entire bottom cabinet was not level okay i actually realized this before i finished the tile but it's when i put the sink in like it was real obvious so my tile that i installed was level but the sink itself was not so what i did was i shimmed it you get these little slats there higher on one side and skinnier on one side and you kind of use them to level things out I also installed this light. There is a video of this installation on this channel. I'll link that in the description, the comments, and in the end of the video if I can. I had wanted to put the marble style tile on the floor, but then I changed my mind since this is the bathroom that, you know, guests use and it's right, you know, it's right there. So I didn't want to do a light colored tile. So just went ahead and used the same tile that is all over the kitchen. There is a video for the peel and stick tile installation on this channel and decided to just bring that into the bathroom and it worked out just fine. I did not do the um, extra glue um, because I really didn't need it for this area because it it's just a half bath. The reason why I use the extra glue in my entire kitchen is because we're always in the kitchen, you know what I mean? So just for extra security, and I don't see any floods or anything happening in this bathroom. All right, so for special cuts, I literally use a pencil and draw out the shape. I use a box cutter to cut it out. I actually had a small needle, needle nose plier that I would use to help remove pieces but I couldn't find it so I had to use Lucy's dog clippers so if you see that that's what that is don't laugh okay so you gotta figure it out sometimes okay all right once I have my shape and if it's off what I do is I go back with the little scrap piece that I cut and I just fit it in and I also use a bit of pre-mixed grout 
to kind of camouflage my little cuts. So you can't even tell that, you know, I pretty much fit those pieces in there. Um, when you do cut your peel and stick tile, I suggest you not, you know, cut it while over, you know, a piece of tile that you already installed because sometimes you could slip and then your blade will cut the tile a little bit that you already installed. So I'm doing it here. So I'm just letting you know, if you're not familiar with peel and stick tile, don't cut your tile on top of tile you already installed because you can accidentally cut it. I mean, you won't notice it, but you'll feel it on your feet, okay? And there is a video for the peel and stick tile, so I'll link that for you guys, like I mentioned. And it's pretty easy. You can just, you know, put the tile down, take the paper off, and stick it down to the ground. Just make sure you cut it, you know, pretty good so it fits in nice and neat. And it doesn't look like, you know, you did it yourself. Make it look like somebody did it for you, like you paid someone, you know. Um, and a lot of you were curious to figure out how I did around the toilet. So, look, I'm not no professional floor installer or whatever. I just, you know, figure things out as I go. So I use a piece of paper towel to kind of get my shape for around the toilet. And then I, you know, pretty much averaged and winged it. <laughs> okay to get my shape and I also used a ruler as you guys could see to give me a distance from the toilet to the beginning part of the tile and then I cut it out and fit it in you can always remove your toilet then do the tile and put your toilet back but I was by myself and I have the baby with me and you know projects take longer now to do even editing takes longer now everything takes longer and it's okay you know babies require a lot of attention so I'm, I'm, I'm okay I'm fine all right so as you guys can see I'm using my box cutter to cut out my shape and don't cut until you are a hundred percent sure that you are at least 90% there okay you can always go back and remove just a little bit which I am doing right here and then once you have that done it fits perfectly and then you can put it in sometimes you can just loosen up the little um, the little screws on your toilet and it will make it loose enough just so you can slide your tile under there but you know doing that can also um, separate your wax ring which can cause a really bad leak so don't do that I'm just telling you it can be done but don't do that because if you're not a plumber or don't have a you know a husband or a wife or anybody that you know that can do plumbing don't do that okay don't do that so that's why I just run around the toilet because I'm 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 not picking up my toilet I, my back still hurts from giving birth so I'm not doing that I wanted to change this um, great color or whatever you call this thing is a great right it's great it's a great um, I decided to spray it a dark gray but it looked a little too blue so I actually I actually ended up changing it a bit as far as the cabinet doors I am using a no sand primer so a primer that requires no sanding this is the same brand of primer that I use for my kitchen cabinets and I just did a scratch test there this is the gray color um, of that same formula I just wanted to see if it made a difference and I do really like it I like that it is gray and I can see where I put paint and where I didn't especially if you're using white paint for the faux um, drawer cover for the half bath I decided to put on some hardware to make it look a little bit more finished okay and I noticed these holes on the back of the um, faux drawer cover and I figured this must be for hardware and I did the measurements I found the center and then drilled my hole I realized that my screws were too short so what I had to do was drill kind of like a lip so that the screw can go in you see there it's like two holes so you have the hole that's just for the screw and then another hole for the screw head to fit in. I'm not exactly sure what you call it. If any of my followers or subscribers on here know what you call it, you can go ahead and comment whatever that hole is called. You could call it an inner lip, an outer lip, a lip. I don't know. But 
I had to make some type of um, lip, inner lip, to have my screw go in so that I can attach my hardware. I had my daughters help me with this, okay? So once we got that on, we put the little slats back on the back of it, and then I showed them how to shim this. I had to actually shim the drawer cover because remember I said that my whole cabinet was uneven, so I had to level everything out to make sure it was correct, okay? If I did not level this out, it would have looked like my drawer cabinet was uneven. So I used a shim under it and then install the cabinet, tighten the screws to keep it in place. And like I said, I didn't like the color of the grate, so I made it a bit lighter and then waited, waited for it to dry, okay? Here, my primer finally dried, so I went ahead and added my, um, Alkid paint, Alkid, Alkid paint. I'm sorry, sorry you guys. Alkid paint. It is the uh, semi-gloss Alkid paint or gloss, semi-gloss Alkid paint. And this is perfect for cabinets. Very easy to clean and very hard to chip it. Okay. And the primer again, like I use, requires no sanding, but you must clean your cabinets okay if you're you if you're using the primer for kitchen cabinets clean your cabinets remove all the grease oil food dirt off of them if it's for the bathroom clean it because even if the primer says no sanding if you have a big glob of oil and grease on there it's not going to work properly so clean your cabinets okay so here i added the final hardware and final touches and this is it um, I think I'm going to put a towel holder on that wall over there because it feels empty. And I might put in a toilet toilet holder, paper towel holder. And um, yeah, that will be it. But um, for now, this is it. It is done. And I'm very happy with the results. If you guys enjoyed the video. Oh, by the way, that shelf. I got that for five bucks, you guys. And painted it white, spray painted it white. And it works in the bathroom. I'm not trying to go for a super modern look. I'm going for more of a homey, updated look, if that makes sense to you guys. That's my entire house. Everything is very traditional looking, but slightly updated, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, let me know what you think, and don't forget to check out these videos to help you install the tile, the flooring, and just see how I do the things that I do. Love you guys. Thanks for following. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.